there's a few different factors for whoever's running the warm up, whether it be a player, a uh, skills coach, tactical coach, uh, or a strength and conditioning coach if you have one at your club. Um, for this presentation will be revolved around if a strength and conditioning coach is running it or for the players that run it. Um, so you have the uh, knowledge on, on how to appropriately prepare a good warm up. And that's the real key with warm is we don't want to just do a lap around the oval, uh, do a couple of stationary kicks and then get straight into it. Um, we can definitely make the most of the time and make sure that it's effective. And that's where we want to take into account some key areas. And there's some certain rules that uh, I have that no matter what, I try and make sure I incorporate in, in the warm-ups that I've run. Um, and been lucky enough to work under some really good practitioners and have definitely um, transferred their knowledge into my philosophy when it comes to warm ups. So as I mentioned before, we have some key pillars for when I'm designing a warm up. And uh, like I mentioned, games can be a great circuit breaker, particularly coming off a loss um, and to, to help lighten up the mood, um, as well as if we're in the thick of preseason around that February time where everyone's feeling a bit fatigued, uh, it can be a good way to um, lighten up uh, the session and, and get us in a uh, mental state that's going to get us enjoying our football. So some of the favourite ones, like I mentioned, call off numbers to group off. Simon says face off with a partner. So that's where you're doing. Um, you've got a uh, you've got a football in the middle of, of a pair and uh, or it can be a um, tag strap, anything that the part that you're competing with, with the person in front of you. Mobility. Uh, like I mentioned before, the three big rocks, we've got our ankles, hips, and then posterior chain, which mainly around our hamstrings. So these will help us for movements like ground balls, change of direction, and sprinting acceleration work. So uh, ankle dorsiflexion, which is just if we keep our foot flat on the ground and we try and get our knee over our toes, uh, that's our dorsiflexion. So banded elevated calf stretch, where you have the band distracting the talus bone over the ankle joint. Next, as a priority list for a good warm-up, is running technique. And this will improve as we focus on getting fitter. If we're running efficiently, more efficiently, we're improving um, the our uh, ability to use the energy that we have. So if you are running well and efficiently, not only is that going to reduce your likelihood of overload type injuries, but you're going to um, be able to use your capacity a lot more effectively in the game. Next as a priority list is your athlete development. So working on your jumping and bounding mechanics so that way we can get some power development in our warm-up so think about a bound where you're trying to put a hole in the ground uh, and jump as far as you can off one leg lateral jumps where you and, and lateral drives where you're pushing the ground away from you and you're moving sideways and then the triple hop where off one leg you're drive, drive, jumping in diagonal pattern on one leg and then sticking the landing with a lot of these so we're not only about to produce force which is like our uh, acceleration but also we're able to handle that force and, and develop our brakes, um, which will help you for that reactive component uh, on the field. So that's where we want to make sure we're practicing sticking the landing at the end of these power exercises. So you're able to be ready for the next play on the field, whether that be a defensive action or a uh, offensive action. And then, as I mentioned, we want to make sure we've got an understanding of the group and also um, what's the session ahead. So if it's our main football session, we want high intensity, building up to high intensity in the warm-up. So those players and, and the whole group is ready to go for the, for the football coaches. Uh, incorporating agility, so they're alert and they're, they're reacting to things and they're practicing um, reacting to cues. And um, these warm-ups will typically take a lot longer from a duration point of view to get the body ready to, at, a, at a game intensity and above.